This is Fred Beck from Fred Royce High Team. Today I'm very lucky to join by Ahara Davis. So, Ahara, it's been nearly a year since you last spoke. How have you been in that time? Um, I've been good. Uh, you know, same old, just been training, you know, gym every day. Um, I fought um, last week or the week before that. So, I've just been training, getting ready, um, improving, getting ready for that fight, which I won. Yeah, certainly. And just before we uh, play on the link, you said you do some kind of cryptocurrency stuff. Now, I don't know yeah. about kind of crypto and Bitcoin. What can you tell me yeah. about? Crypto is the future. The future. Um, you know, in a world, I've been watching the news, I've been learning a lot about inflation, uh, inflate, inflation hedges, um, investments. And, you know, I've learned what a good investment is. Things like jewelry is a good investment. Certain jewelry that, um, that I can buy is a good investment. Property is a good investment. And also crypto is a good investment. So I've been into crypto the past three or four months now. And I've earned half decent money on there. So just something that I really want to learn. And, um, you know, because I have to invest because this boxing career that I've got is not going to go on forever. It's a short boxing career. So I've got to make sure that once I've done, I've got something that I can say. I've earned this in my boxing career and that's going to, and that's going to keep me going for the rest of my life. Yeah, it's good. It's always good to think ahead. But how do you even learn about that crypto stuff? It's just YouTube, YouTube video tutorials. Is that how you kind of figure it out? My brother taught me small bits and pieces here and there. I've also looked online. So I've learned a lot online. Uh, I speak to other people that are also into crypto, into Bitcoin and, and, and also into other coins. And just been speaking to everyone. Um, I've got my own understanding of it now. Oh, okay, that, that's pretty good. And have you looked at any of these NFT stuff? Because they've just been coming out quite a lot. I've looked, tokens, I, have looked, cool. I have looked into NFTs. I have looked into NFTs. I've spoken to a few people about NFTs, but for me, I don't fully understand NFTs just yet. I understand crypto, so that's what I'm doing. I'm doing what I understand. NFTs, maybe I'll get to understand that as time goes on, but to me right now, it's like speaking another language. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a good analogy, actually. Well, I don't know anything about crypto. I should probably have a look at it. Now you're kind of back in rainy England, and a few weeks ago you're out in Dubai. What was Dubai like? Yeah. I guess because last time you spoke to me, you said you wanted to fight outside of the UK, and that's like you did that. Yeah. Dubai was amazing, but for me, it was so different to anything that I've experienced in England. You know, in England, I'm, fight, I'm fighting in front of thousands and thousands, but in Dubai, it was a small arena that probably held about less than 200 people in there. But the whole scenery, the whole setup, it was amazing, immaculate, better than anything I've experienced in England. It was more classy crowds, not shouting, making noise and being rowdy and getting drunk and drinking beer and throwing chairs around and fighting amongst each other. These people were just sat down quietly enjoying the show. They'll clap when they need to clap, shout when they need to shout and be quiet when they need to be quiet. There was food given to the fighters and the fans. You know, oh, it was amazing. It was amazing. Um, the whole, it's like, it's like the whole quality of that show. The quality was just immaculate. Um, and I like to, I like to continue my boxing career in Dubai from now on. I spoke to MTK after the fight. I, I, I said to them, my next fight, I need it to be here. I'm not going back to England where it's cold. I need to be out in the heat. And when you're doing your walkout, were the kind of Lamborghinis and Rolls Royces when you're walking out? There were Lamborghinis and, and, and a Rolls Royce, but, um, you know, it's what people said, but I don't remember seeing it. I was so focused on the fight and what's right in front of me to see what's right beside me. So that's what everyone said, but um, I don't recall seeing it. But if they said it was there, then I guess it was there. Yeah, it's not a bad photo of you kind of walking out there. And um, your opponent, I've got his name here, Nicholas Manguini. Is that how I pronounce it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nicholas Manguini, obviously that's a you know, 10 wins of three losses. You're coming off the golden contract win with Tyra McKenna. What kind of, we haven't heard much about that kind of golden contract. Where does that take you? Um, it took me to number, I'm number three right now in the WBA. It took me, it took me really high up in the rankings. What, what was included in the golden contract? I spoke to MTK after the fight. I took a few months off and I spoke to MTK and I decided, because it was for a deal up in America. My deal was, was, was with a certain boxing promoter in America. I spoke to MTK, looked at my different options, and, you know, we thought it would be better if I don't take that deal and I go down my own route. So that's what I've decided to do. I've decided just to do my own thing, go down my own route, 
and I prefer fighting in Dubai than fighting in America. America, that was one of my dreams to fight there when I first got into boxing as an amateur, but that's no longer my dream. I've got new dreams now and I want to continue my boxing career in Dubai. And when I spoke to John and Carol a few weeks ago, who was saying that he's going to try and move out to Dubai. Do you think you're going to try and do that, live in Dubai? I don't know. It's a possibility. I've been thinking about moving out of there, but, you know, I've got my coach and my team here. And my coach, he's got a few other fighters and, you know, I've got to be with my coach and, and, where, my, and where my team's at. But it's something I could look at after my boxing career because England's a bit too cold for me, honestly. Yeah. Especially in the winter now where it just starts to rain. There's even snow much. I guess last year it snowed, but it was only for like what one day. So it's not it's not the great well, the weather isn't great, we'll put it like that. Like just today we had the press conference with Josh Taylor and Jack Cashrell. You're the only person to share the ring of both men. Who who who'd you have in that fight then? The Taylor fight I lost, the Carroll fight, I actually won. You have to fight back, you and you and, and you realize and you speak to everyone that was there, you know who should have won the fight. Um, but you know. Obviously, Taylor wins the fight. I found Taylor a lot harder than what I found Catterwall. I found Catterwall easy. I won the fight clearly, and they and they and they took it off me. So I think Taylor wins the fight quite clearly. Um, the promotion for the first fight, or what was meant to be the first fight, wasn't big whatsoever. There was no exposure. No, there was no promotion. Nothing. And in this second fight, I feel like it's going to be the, the same thing. Catterwall's not a big name, and he's not a big draw. As much as they try to push him up and they try to promote him as a big name, he isn't a big name and he's not going to be a big name. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's just me being honest. The show's not going to, um, it's not going to get as much exposure as it should get because Taylor, even though he's a unified world champion, he's not a big, he's not as big of a name as he should be. So I probably won't even watch the fight to be honest because I know that Taylor's just going to go in there and deal with him like he's done with everyone else. Why do you think that Josh Taylor isn't as big as a name as he should be? I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. I know that. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that might happen because he won. He won all the belts in lockdown. I don't, know, I, nah. Nah. I don't know what it is. You know, sometimes in boxing, you get some people that don't achieve as much, but they're much bigger names and they're much and they're much more of a bigger draw. And you get other people that win so much and they're just not a big name. Like I look at Charlie Magri. Uh, he was a great fighter from years ago. He won, like he won it all. He won world titles and this and that. And today he walks down the streets and no one knows who this guy is. Um, you know, there's other fighters like that that have achieved so much in the boxing career. You just don't know who these guys are because they're not promoted. It's not that they're, it's not that they're not promoted. Either they're not promoted that well or they haven't got a personality or the fans just don't draw to them. I don't know, I don't know what it is, but it's weird. Yeah, you do say that sometimes with Sandra and Fart. Is it anyway? I don't think too much of time, but you got before the year ends, you got anything else coming up in the month of December? Food. <laughs> food, <laughs> food. Um, uh, burgers, cakes, apple crumble, custard. Oh my goodness, you name it, I'm eating it. Uh, for the rest of the year, I just want to enjoy my time, have a good few weeks and then the start of the new year back to hard work dedication because i'll be looking to fight again march april time so i want to be really busy really active this year next year if i can get three or four fights in um i'll be pleased yeah certainly what's in your christmas list though and christmas coming up uh, i don't know i haven't really thought about that i don't really celebrate christmas like that to me you know in this life that i live it every day is like christmas to me right now the way i'm feeling <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess good way to think about it. All right, Ohara, thanks so much for time. It's always good. Uh, Thank you. Good to talk to you. So, where can people find you on social media, at Instagram, Twitter? Twitter. Oh, um, it's just my name, Ohara Davis. Instagram, same thing. Ohara Davis. Facebook, same thing. Snapchat, same thing. I'm on all these. I'm on all these different um like platforms, so you can find me on each of them. Just type in my name, and I'll come up. What about your YouTube channel? Because you had that going for a while, but you haven't posted in a while. Yeah, I haven't really posted anything on YouTube. I used to speak a lot on my YouTube, give the people um, good information. And a lot of people have been asking me to get back onto YouTube. Something that I'll probably start again. Maybe I'll record today or tomorrow, actually. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually going to start that. Now that you've just now said it, I'm going to record either today or tomorrow. You could do advice for cryptocurrency then. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'm watch I'm those I'm ones. 
I might I might speak about that. Act. I might speak about that actually. Who knows? There you go. It's a video idea. If you are a horror, I'll catch up soon then, mate. Thanks so much for your time again. It's always good talking to you. Thank you.